Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. In today's edition of Wheezy's FPS War College, we're going to go over four easy and fun things that you can do to improve your aim in every FPS game that you play. So let's go talk about it. All right, minions, we're going to go in an escalating order of things that you can do to work on improving your game in every FPS you play. I've given some examples here of some clips from various games, but you can incorporate any game that you enjoy playing with these same techniques to work on getting your aim better and better. The first thing is going to be just playing with the weapons. Some games have a test range, like here in Battlefield 4, um, or you can just go into any like game that has a mode where you can just wander around the map with no bots available, so you can just try out the weapons, get used to the map movement, try out how weapons react at range, especially if there is something like a test range where you can see how accuracy is affected, you can see how if the game has bullet velocity, how that matters, how it affects the gameplay, and just get a little bit of comfort with switching targets, aiming down sights, moving, in a completely zero stress environment where you can just get a feel for the weapons. A lot of people who do like strict technical weapons testing for like recoil will use this kind of environment. If you're struggling with your aim in games, this can be a good place to start to just start trying out each weapon, using it to change targets, move behind cover, and you don't have to worry about any sort of stress. If you want to move it up from there, you can use a wave-based game mode, preferably something with like zombies, and the reason I say zombies is because they won't shoot back at you. Obviously this is like a Call of Duty focused piece, but other games have other wave-based modes. If you have one where the enemies do not shoot at you, that is preferable because it gives you the ability to interact with moving targets and practice aiming and moving around the map taking cover in some cases, not necessarily because you don't need return fire, but being able to work on getting headshots on moving targets, moving around targets that are attacking you, keeping situational awareness for, for enemies that are approaching you. So zombies can be that next step up after you've gotten comfortable with the weapons and general aiming to where you're working with moving targets, working with more danger under a little bit more stress, but in an environment where enemies can't really shoot back at you. You want to go another step beyond that, the third thing that you can do is to play a game with bots. Now, modern FPS games, many, many of them have a mode where you can play with bots. Um, you can usually, as in like um, Cold War, uh, Call of Duty Cold War, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, set the difficulty of the bots. Now, if you start on a low level bot, like here in Cold War, it allows you to incorporate that next step of engaging enemies where you have to worry about them shooting back on lower difficulty levels obviously you don't have to worry that much bots can be kind of stupid especially on lower difficulty levels so that can also be a good opportunity not just to work on your aim and on your cover and on your map movement but also to maybe try out some new weapons or tactics that you're not comfortable with say you want to work on sniping or quick scoping and that's not something you're comfortable with jumping into a multiplayer match may be a frustrating and painful way to work on that going into a match with bots that are on stupid mode may be a lot more enjoyable and a lot less difficult and a good way to get that muscle memory down to work on those aiming skills that really help you when you transition into the game. It can also allow you, un unrelated to your aim, to try out different kill streaks and stuff like that in games that have those um, in a, again, an environment where it's much easier to get them. So bots are an excellent way to improve your overall aim and skills without going into full competitive multiplayer. Even with a skill based even with a skill based matchmaking system, like in modern Call of Duty games, that can be a good and a bad because it can put you in with people of your skill level. If you're trying to improve, that may not be as helpful as being able to just overall work on your aim versus getting used to competing with people at your skill level. So bots, a very valuable tool for improving your aim. Uh, as well as just in general, you can use it to warm up before you jump into a multiplayer match to make sure your aim is spot on. The fourth thing that you can do is more bots, more difficult bots. You can set up uh, in many games 
um, different scenarios, like you can set up a 1v1 versus a really hard bot, or you can set up engagements 2v1s, 3v1s, 4v1s with easier or moderate bots, so you can get used to dealing with situations where you're being attacked from multiple angles, you've got to keep your head on a swivel, you need that situational awareness, you need to use cover. As Modern Warfare is a great example of bots that play the game well in a way that is actually not completely dissimilar from what you'll experience in competitive multiplayer, especially as you crank up the difficulty levels. So it is an excellent way to, in a lower stress environment, be able to practice your shots, practice your tactics, using cover, using map movement, in a situation where someone's not going to call you a fag and then scream about your mother. <laughs> so, you can, in a lot of times, the, the bot difficulties, depending on the game, can actually be scaled to where bots are superhuman. They can be better than any human you will encounter because they can be omniscient, they know where you are all the time, they can have instant headshots. Game programmers can make bots be literal hackers, essentially. And if you're trying to increase your aim, even if you're at a high level, this can be a very valuable place for you to in increase your skills, even if you already feel like you have solid aim. It can give you a challenge, make you work harder, and just overall help you improve your game. I'm gonna add one bonus in here on top of these four steps that you can use to improve your aim, and that is Go play some campaign with some shooters. Like, there are some good FPS cam campaigns out there that you can go and play. And in addition to getting a good story, good environments, you will also get an opportunity to practice shooting baddies in the face. It can be a really great time. Go check out some good single player FPS games. All your time on the sticks, on the mouse and keyboard, it all matters and it all helps you get an improvement to your overall skill level. Now, whether you're working with keyboard and mouse, controller, this is always going to be helpful for you. Not going to cover something like sensitivity in this uh, video specifically. Obviously, these modes are places where you can test those sensitivities out. Maybe I'll address that in a different video where we talk specifically about how to hone in your specific sensitivities to improve your playstyle. But for the purposes of this video, this is an easy, effective, fun way for you to go in, work on improving your shot, making your aim better, so that when you drop into your next multiplayer game, you're gonna be that much better at shooting people in the face. All right, minions, that's it. Hopefully you found that helpful. Wheezy's FPS War College is all about helping you get better at shooting people in the face. Uh, if you enjoyed this, leave me a like. If you guys don't like Wheezy's FPS War College, you got some suggestions, leave me a dislike, leave me a comment. Leave me a comment, tell me what you like. Subscribe if you want more stuff like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.